Welcome, this is Zangler, the Tesla semi-advocate, bringing you another episode that was actually filmed Friday morning, May 23rd. And I may have uh, given away the, the, uh, the lead on the thumbnail, but I'm holding out here. This is the second entrance to Giga, to Giga Nevada, the Giga, the Giga Semi Factory. This is at the uh, north east corner of the uh, property and this this is a good look at coming in from a different direction than we normally do and um, you can see the uh, mega chargers and all the light poles that have been put in and in about a minute you're going to be see the big giant huge news so for the first time ever they've got a giant crane being assembled so we've talked about how they used the BZI Mesmaster for most of the roof work and avoided the cost of, uh, of leasing a crane on site and lowered capital expenditures. But all along, I think we knew that there would be one of these huge cranes eventually. And we're gonna see this thing put to work in a few days. Again, it's Friday. So probably sometime next week, it'll actually be put to work. And I believe it'll be put to work putting um, HVAC AC units on the roof. By all means, stay tuned and um, I'll try to fly on Wednesday or Thursday and hopefully catch this thing in action. I'll fly earlier in the day or in the middle of the day to mid-afternoon. So when I drove up on this site, it looked like two separate cranes and uh, this giant crane seems to defy the laws of physics the, the amount of uh, counterweighting it must have is tremendous, and uh, we'll, we'll try to get a good look at it when it's in action, but you can see all those weights, many, many tons of counterweight. So there's also, one of my pr um, observations is, this is starting to look like a nearly completed factory. Travel around the um, factory um, let me know what you think about the state of affairs. Um, from the exterior standpoint, this thing is nearly complete and they are doing the finishing touches, including um, paving. And by the way, this corner, the uh, test track is gonna do a 180 and then go back on itself according to the uh, plans or the uh, rendering Call flipping a biatch. Um, a big a big 180 and going down, back down the other direction. And this, the road that goes this way is for production. Here we're going down the western edge of the building. For most of us who, regular viewers, we're very familiar and we're coming up to the uh, very exciting stamping section G. They still have the sky braces up and most of the corrugated steel roof is in place except for this small area. And it looks to me like they have expanded. Yeah, that little appendage used to just be standalone. And it looks to me like they've extended it. Tell me, let me know if you agree. So this is an early morning flight um, on Friday morning. And normally I, I would try to get the uh, video out by at least the next morning. But um, I was overcome by circumstances on this Memorial Weekend and um, getting, recording it for you Saturday, I mean Sunday afternoon, and we'll post it shortly. Due, the, due to the lighting, you know, some areas will be uh, far better exposed than others. And unfortunately, the stamping section from this direction is not excellent lighting to see what's going on underneath the roof and through the walls. Another observation I'd like to make is that the Tesla Semi program seems to be coming into its own. It now has a X account and um, that, that account has been somewhat active and Dan Priestley seems to be more active and um, maybe he'll even like this video or make a comment about the big, giant, huge crane. 
This angle is obviously much better to see what's going on underneath in, in the stamping pits. And um, it looks pretty mature. Looks like they've, they've at least got forms, if not concrete, subfloors poured. And um, the Tesla Semi Big Dog is still standing guard over the um, project. I did fly after this and saw a lot of interesting stuff over at the Tesla Semi uh, prototype production building and uh, stay tuned for that video also. There's the panel table. I think it's not long for this project since there's only that little tiny appendage, appendage over on the stamping section west perimeter wall that needs corrugated metal roof. This area we're looking at is the current and future parking area for um, Tesla employees, both working on the, on the project and also in the future working on the production line. We're now looking west along the southwest perimeter of the building. And that crane's gonna start putting, you can see the bases that have been built for different um, HVAC equipment, and uh, that crane is no doubt going to start lifting heavy HVAC units onto the building. And looks like it could probably reach all the way across from one side to the other. Here's a good look at the Legacy Giga Nevada GF1, Gigafactory 1. That big water tank in the background is a geothermal uh, facility or tank that stores hot water in the winter and cold water in the summer. One of the large um, engineering projects on this uh, Giga Semi building and the addition to the existing Giga Factory or Giga Nevada is um, working on drainage. The uh, Historically, Giga Factory 1 has had some issues with uh, drainage during the occasional heavy rains that come to the Nevada uh, desert, high desert. There was a lot of time spent early on in this project working on um, stormwater management and to remediate any of those issues and ensure that this place doesn't become Tesla Lake during the occasional deluge. Can't wait to see the, uh, them complete the megachargers here. I do know that the uh, two or th the three mega the three mega chargers. Sorry about that. Up at the uh, Legacy Gig in Nevada, that the current production and engineering units are using can get crowded at times. So I bet they're looking forward to being able to uh, charge Tesla semis down here. It will also alleviate traffic at the main gate if they come in the second gate here and uh, which is right adjacent to these mega chargers. There's a good look at the uh, northern perimeter of the building, coming back and looking at the uh, huge giant crane. Again, we'll see, we'll see this thing in action probably next week. I don't think they're going to bring it in and then not put it to work um, in order to uh, not have to uh, pay the very expensive fees for having this crane on site. I don't know. I, I, I mean, it's total speculation, but this crane, I doubt, is here more than two or three weeks. We'll see.
I am somewhat awed by the sheer size of the screen, and it does look like it, could, it can reach any quadrant of the, uh, any of the six main sections of the building to uh, lift HVAC equipment, which I do not see on site yet, so I imagine that stuff's gonna come in immediately starting Monday and then be placed uh, strategically around the building close to where it's supposed to go. And you can see those bases, all of those structures, not the, not the skylights, but the other rectangular shapes are no doubt for HVAC units. And you might get a better look at those if you uh, look closely later as we fly over the building, heading back to the uh, drone takeoff location. At this point in time, we are look at see what's going on with the uh, electrical line that has been run around the base of Mount Tesla here to the east of the Giga Semi and to the north of Gigafactory One. If you've been watching there, or if you want, to, if you're curious, watch a previous episode um, where we follow the trench being dug from the main building up to the side of this hill to where you see that grater and um, then it turns right heads south and then heads east around this mountain which i'm calling mount tesla and uh, this is going to be a road by the way uh, a second way into giga factory one but anyways that that line there's two heavy duty electrical lines that go around this corner here and we're going to go take a look and see if we can see anything going on it eventually heads over back it turns again south right now that road is heading east and then when we get up here a little bit we'll see it head south again starting to turn south and head over to a uh, substation electrical substation that's uh, existing one and I believe there are multiple substations feeding this um, Tesla's Gigafactory 1 and Tesla Semi factory. Now here's a little flat area where there's a lot of um, underground utility boxes indicated by those hatches to, to be able to get in there. You see the giant looms of electrical wire. One of the things I'm speculating on is that this area could be a mega, mega pack farm. I cannot imagine this factory not having a mega pack, um, large mega pack installation added. There are some very old, original OG mega packs over at a substation just to the um, north of here that I believe also feeds Giga Nevada, but maybe not. Um, as much as this one, or maybe this, this, this electricity actually comes from that substation over there too. There's a local um, gas production company owned by Berkshire Hathaway that uses natural gas to produce electricity. There's also a ton of solar up here, and I would like to see Tesla step up its game and build solar fields the, that match or exceed the um, Apple solar farm that, that feeds the Apple server farm. Coming back to the uh, Gigafactory and the uh, location of the megachargers, work that's been being done back to the drone takeoff location via the DJI Air 3 return to home feature. That, that bracing right there is, is going to receive a lot of HVAC from that giant crane. I feel confident of that. And there is the Tesla Semi Advocate and the uh, world's fastest drone support vehicle, 
the Tesla Model S Plaid that I have named Event Horizon. I want to thank you for um, joining me and uh, please, if you get a chance, uh, try to uh, like or subscribe uh, depending on which platform you're on and it's much appreciated. What's really appreciated and is an amazing boost to the channel is if you do decide you want to buy a Tesla and you use my referral uh, link, that is tremendously helpful and has so far been a, been a much appreciated uh, bonus.